Hi everybody, it's Jessica, the Dollhouse Curator, and welcome back to the Curated Dollhouse. So today we are going through another Curator's Corner segment and for the current dollhouse that we have up, and I am calling this dollhouse my Makeover Madness Dollhouse, and I will explain that here in a minute. But I love this one. As you see, we only did three rooms in this dollhouse. We did a full camping scene on the bottom. And y'all know my space is 61 inches long. And now due to some extra, you know, little stuff that I've added in, it is 21 inches deep now. So um, we did a full camping scene on the bottom in that entire space. I did an office space over here. And then I did a kitchen and dining room space over here. So, why are we calling it a Makeover Madness dollhouse? Because we got this truck. I have been looking for this truck. I have wanted this truck for so long, but I refused to pay the price that it was on Amazon. And the other day, after getting some amazing news in my real life, I went to Goodwill, and actually, I just went on a full little outing, and I my last trip was... Yeah, my last stop on my little celebration trip was my local Goodwill, and they had that truck for $4. And I was like, oh my God, are you serious? Thank you. Because this is a great way to celebrate the great news that I had gotten with the Barbie truck that I had wanted for so long. And if you remember a few weeks ago with the very first Curator's Corner that we did for Erica's apartment, I had that beautiful pink functional kitchen. And I told y'all it was not going to stay pink because I'm not a pink girl. So we finally got the makeover done on the kitchen and I think it turned out well. And then we put an office in this space because in my house, I do not have my own private office. So I was like, this would be super cute to go with the truck and the beautiful kitchen to create little Miss Short Petite Mini Me, a cute little office, and then to do a camping scene to highlight the truck. And then of course, a kitchen scene to work with the beautiful new kitchen. So we're going to start this curator's corner down in the camping scene over here with the truck. And I will tell you all of the different things that I did for the makeover. So first off, again, the truck was $4 at my local Goodwill. And not sure why someone got rid of it, but I'm very thankful that they did. If you're watching this, thank you. Appreciate it. So one thing that I found on the truck is that this wheel is loose. I can't figure out how to get it back in place good. It's not gonna fall off, but it's just loose. So it kind of gets a wobble when it moves. But I'm like, you know what? I don't care. I got this truck for $4. I, it's worth a wobble in a tire. So I used some gray Rust-Oleum paint and primer. My local hardware store that I went to did not have any just basic plastic primer. So I used a spray paint with paint and primer included. This is a dark gray in a gloss finish so that that way it could have just a little sheen on it. Y'all know I'm not a pink girl, but I did decide to leave the tires with a little bit of pink on it because I thought it looked kind of cute with the light here in the back and it pays honor to its Barbie origins. The truck was missing a couple of things. It was missing the side mirrors and initially it was also missing the tailgate. So I did a quick little craft. This is some foam board, some poster board, and just a couple of little wood sticks. And I wrapped it up so that I could get it to work. And yes, it does function. There you go. I was so super excited that I was able to get that to work that, that way. And it looks really nice. Yes, I'm going to leave it with this kind of metal tape look because I think it gives it a little bit of extra distinction. And if you were wondering what the JWJ stands for, those are my dad's initials. And I thought this was a cute way to pay homage to my dad in the dollhouse like we did with the penny doll with my mom because yes, they paid lots of money for Barbie over the years. So I think the makeover on the truck turned out really good. And I will also say it wasn't the most difficult to take apart to spray paint. So I actually had more problems getting it back together because I want it to be very easy and not scratch anything. But I think it turned out really good. So for the camping scene, we did... We didn't do a backdrop, as y'all see, to make it have trees or, you know, anything like that. The space is 61 inches long, and I just, I tried different things, but I couldn't get anything to really work 
sufficiently. So I went and got some sticks from the backyard, created some three dimension. And I was like, you know what? It'll just be nighttime in the camping scene here so that that way I don't have to worry about trying to put a bunch of stuff in the back or try to print something or find poster board or posters and slow down the progress on creating this really cool scene. For the ground, I found these rugs at the Dollar Tree and I had some other grass type stuff that I was going to use, but it looked too manicured. So I wanted something that looked a bit more rustic because I don't know about y'all, but when I look in my backyard, I see green, I see brown, I see red because I live in Texas and we got that red clay dirt. But I was like, it's okay to have a little bit of different colors in there for the ground. And to kind of help disguise, I used the tree branches. I got real rocks from outside. I used some of my cute little rocks that I love. And then we took just basic, uh, what is this? Foam board, cardboard, and I tore it up to make leaves so that it can kind of disguise from the other little areas. So I just absolutely loved it. I thought it was really cute. Some of the other crafts that I did for this one, I made this really cool little cooler. Okay, it is cool to me. Some of you may be like, that is not cool. But for me, it's amazing because I made it. I used just some cardboard, a paper clip, some computer paper to go over it, both basic computer paper and cardstock. But honestly, I wouldn't recommend using the cardstock because it doesn't bend well. But I did make it so it can open. As you see, I got some little camping stuff in there. And I added this little paper clip on it so it had a little handle because I thought that just really worked well with the camping scene. Here for the little camping stove, this is a mason jar top. I got two of these at the Dollar Tree for $1.25. And I just thought it was cute. And when I went to the Dollar Tree, I was looking for something that I could maybe make or use. And then I ran across this and I was like, okay, this will be perfect. I put a little flickering tea light in there and I'm gonna turn the lights off and my little side light, I'm gonna turn it so y'all can see it even throws off a good amount of like little fire look when you have it on. So I thought that was a really cute detail for in the dollhouse for this camping scene. Y'all have probably seen this one a lot. This is my little coffee pot that I made with some copper and some coffee cups back here. I thought it was really cute for the idea of a camping coffee pot. So we went with those and then these little marshmallow sticks came with the Barbie RV. I still have it, it's in the garage. I will probably never do a makeover on that one because that thing is huge and it scares me to try to do a makeover. But it had these little pieces in it and I was like, okay, yes, this is just really coming together. This is a little knife something thing. I don't know what this came with. I don't know what doll it came with for my kids or action figures, but it looked like it could cut wood. And I was like, it works for a camping scene. We used a uh, shovel because, hey, you're out camping. There's no bathroom. So you got to get creative when you have to go to the bathroom. So we put a shovel in the scene just to add a little bit more realism. And then I made this cute tent. It is just a piece of foam board that has been kind of scored on both sides so it can fold. I covered it in gray fabric and I put some of the little flaps on. These do not completely close in the front. I just wanted it for decoration, but I put some flaps on the front that I thought were super cute. And then on the inside, we have some camo curtains that are up there. And y'all, I put a pocket on both sides of this. And I put a pocket so that some of the stuff that I made, like these little sleeping bags and little camping pillows that I could actually store in the pockets of the tent. So it turned out really cute. And then I'm gonna show you the windows. I put a window on both sides. And on the window, I used the side of a Fashionista box. Um, one of the ones that come in the wheelchair that come in the actual box and not just the little zip up package. And I used the Barbie logo part on that on both sides. I thought that was a nice nod back to where the plastic came from. A couple of other crafts that I made specifically for this idea, not my toilet paper, I made that a couple of weeks ago, but we're camping, you gotta have your toilet paper too. But I made little soda boxes. I think these look like cute little 12 packs. So cute. And my best friend asked me, she said, oh, what's B&J Cola? Is that a cola y'all got down there? No, this stands, for, this stands for Bellinger and Jackson. So I did that because I like for 
my crafts to look crafty. So that's why I did it. But I made one in blue, one in red to go with the camping scene. I made these paper sacks to put the groceries in. And I made the camping sacks for the groceries, actually for the kitchen. And then I thought it was really cute for the camping scene as well. It's just a paper sack that I have folded to be Barbie size. And all of the blind balls that I have opened for many brands and foodie mini brands, I've never gotten any of the sacks. So I decided to make my own since I never got any of those. Alrighty, what else do we need to go over in the camping scene? I think that's about it, but these are just basic sticks that I went into the backyard and I broke apart and put up there just to create a little different dimension. So I thought that was really nice. And again, it's always nighttime in our camping scene. Next, we're going to the office. Now the office, there hasn't been a huge makeover in any of this, but I did it because y'all, I don't have an office in my house. I have some workspaces, but I thought how cute to give my little small mini me her own little office and what it would look like. So I did that. I used our crafts that we made from Erica's apartment a few weeks ago, the couch, the table, the artwork, the lamps. I thought the color was really nice. Y'all see, y'all should recognize this bookshelf wardrobe. Last time you seen it, I think it was a wardrobe. This time it is a bookshelf. I used my own little made books to kind of add some dimension to it. And then these books here are actually erasers that I found at the Dollar Tree that actually have a Dr. Seuss theme. Let's wait for it to... There you go, to focus. And I was like, so cute. So here's the cat in the hat. I'm gonna pull out one more and show you this pink one. It's super cute. It is Horton, here's a who. And I was like, oh, this is so cute. It looks like books and they were cheap. I got, again, you get six for a dollar twenty-five at the Dollar Tree. And I got these for two reasons. One, so I could do a little bit more realism in books. And two, because I also have some ideas to either do a Chelsea size room or a play area or a daycare. And I thought the Dr. Seuss theme was just, that would be absolutely adorable in that area. One other craft I want to show you is I made this little window flower box um, from an idea from my froggy stuff. It is not stuck up there. It's just literally sitting. But this is a mini brand slice. And I have a lot of these. And when she used this for some little flower box, I was like, okay, this is perfect. So I bought some blue bonnets and some other flowers and wrapped it in twine and put it together. And I thought that was a cute little addition. I tried to get it to hang on the wall, but I don't have any tape that's strong enough right now. So it just sits off to the side. And then finally, this is like the best thing that I have done in a long time. And that is the makeover on that functional Barbie core pink kitchen. So if y'all remember a few weeks ago, I told you it was not going to stay pink. I was going to do gray and white. I said I was going to be like doing two different grays, but spray paint is expensive and y'all I'm cheap. So I already had to buy one spray paint color for the truck. So I went with a steel gray Rust-Oleum, again, paint and primer. For this one, I used the two little uh, two little blocks underneath like these from the Dollar Tree. I just used two and I put under each one and then I covered that area with a piece of foam board and some metal tape so it kind of gave a sheen. And I did not expect this kind of corrugated design to come through, but it did and I love it because when I take pictures, it gives a little extra dimension to the space. So I love how this kitchen turned out. I'm going to move this chair for a second because where I did the risers, I did cover the kitchen on all three sides. So the left side, the right side, and in the front, I didn't worry about doing the back, but I think that really turned out well. In some of these, I actually left the original kind of design on the back this one especially because i couldn't flip it because of the the, the uh, because of the design of it so i couldn't flip it to make it white but then some of the other ones i did so here in the microwave i flipped that one around so that it's just basic white back there but then down here in the stove I left the one it came with because it kind of looks like food and I thought that was super cute and it again adds that extra dimension 
from afar when you see items in there. So one other thing that I did a makeover on in this kitchen, y'all have not seen this island before because this is one of the first islands that I made for my more realistic furniture. It worked, but it wasn't great. So I was in my bag that is in the closet with my extra storage pieces in there and I seen it and I had the idea, oh, I'm gonna bring this out. It has just like the little um, cushy covering on the top with a cute little design that's gray and white and then it already had the metal tape on the sides but it also had like a piece right across the front so I took that out and I wrapped a skewer in metal tape as well and I made this the island for this kitchen because it's open so it doesn't distract from the beauty of this kitchen that I spent so much time making over but it still kind of goes with the aesthetic. So yeah, y'all, this one again, the Makeover Madness, I have been the last couple of weeks just making a bunch of different crafts and spray painting things and going back over it and lifting it up and, you know, all kind of stuff just to get kind of these ideas that I had in my head out into the dollhouse. I have thoroughly enjoyed it. This space here in this camping space was a struggle and a process to bring together, but I love how it turned out. I love how it highlights the tent that I made, how it really works great with the truck because I really wanted to make sure I had that in there. I love how the kitchen space works. And then y'all will probably see this kitchen a lot because it is convertible. And one of the other ideas I have, because I got two of those kitchens, both of them have been made over already. So one of the next ideas that I'm thinking I'm going to do is a top and bottom apartment theme for a set of twins. And I'm going to use it in all kinds of different configurations so you can see how versatile this kitchen is and how versatile the space is. I hope y'all just seen that that fell over there, but it fell right on top of that tree. We gonna leave it. That is a happy accident. So thank y'all for coming back to visit the Curated Dollhouse. Remember, if you like this concept of walking through all of the dollhouses that we have up, make sure you leave some comments down below. And we will be back next week with a whole new dollhouse or a whole new concept. Bye, y'all.